Hey there, and welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. In today's episode, we'll be building a floating desk. Now, this is going to create a real efficient workspace or a computer area. It's got a real clean design, and it's a simple project that I think you're gonna have a lot of fun building. It has a little drawer that pulls out in the center for your notepad, your pens, or whatever you wanna put in there. And uh, if you enjoy the video or find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Today's project is sponsored by LastPass. If you're anything like me and spend a decent amount of time on your computer or your smartphone, you'll know that keeping track of all your passwords and making sure everything is secure can be a real pain. And that's where LastPass comes in. LastPass is the leading password manager used by millions to simplify their online life and protect their identity. LastPass gives you one safe place to store all your login credentials from your campus email to checking accounts to social media. It's easier than ever to access your online accounts and apps. LastPass remembers your passwords so you can prioritize more important things. When you got a full class schedule and social calendar, you shouldn't have to worry about forgetting and resetting passwords. LastPass autofills your credentials on mobile sites and apps for iOS and Android. When you open an app or a site, LastPass will fill in your username and password for you, making it fast and easy to log in no matter where you are and when you need access to something. LastPass has free and premium versions, and if you'd like to try it out, please click on the link in the description to get started. Thanks to LastPass for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now let's get started on the build. The first step was to figure out where to put the desk, and I found a little nook in the corner that was perfect for it. This area is 42 inches from the corner to the window trim. I used a stud finder to figure out where I'll be able to attach the desk firmly to the wall. I started by ripping down a couple 2x4 boards on the table saw to 2.5 inches in width to give the desk a little sleeker look. Now most store-bought boards are slightly rounded around the corners, so I took a little material off each side to square up the boards. I then ran a 1x4 board through the table saw as well. A miter saw works well for cutting the boards down in length, but a circular saw with a square would also do the job. And for this sized floating desk, cut a longer board that will fasten to the wall and four shorter boards that will face outward from the wall. For today's project, we're going to use a pocket hole jig to create pocket holes, which will be used to connect the boards, but feel free to use your joinery method of choice or to simply use regular screws. Set the jig up for one and a half inch thick stock and then drill two pocket holes on each end of the long board. These are going to connect to the two outer boards that will face into the room. Next, drill pocket holes on each end of the two inner boards. Moving on to the outer boards, we'll only drill the holes on the end which will be in the front of the desk. Lay the boards on a flat surface and have a speed square handy to make sure everything goes together properly. Use wood glue where the boards will meet each other and then use two and a half inch long screws to connect them. The clamp I'm using is made to fit in a pocket hole which helps make it easy to get a snug fit and it also prevents the wood from shifting. Next, move on to the other outside board and repeat the process. Once each board is attached, double check that the corners are square and use a damp rag or towel to remove excess glue. Find the center point of the long board so we can evenly space the inside boards and figure out how big to make the drawer. You'll want to modify your floating desk to best fit your space, and for mine I figured a 15 inch wide drawer would work well. So I measured 8 inches to the side of each center point, which is going to give me a 16 inch wide opening, and my drawer slide hardware requires opening to be 1 inch larger than the drawer, so a half inch on each side. Then attach each inside board using wood glue and two and a half inch long screws. Next, we'll cut the one by boards that are two and a half inches in width down in length. These two boards should be the same length if the drawer is going to be centered. I connected the boards using the one and a half inch jig setting and two inch long screws. Use the clamp to hold the board securely while inserting each screw. And to make the project go smoothly, it's going to be real important to take your time and find nice straight boards at the lumber yard. You only need a couple boards total, so find a couple good ones without warping or twists. We'll move on to the drawer portion of the build. Check that the spacing is the same at the front and back of the drawer area. 
The width of the opening is 16 inches and the depth of the drawer will be 14 and a half inches and we'll have about an inch of space behind the back of the drawer and the board that will be mounted to the wall. I cut half inch thick pine down in length for the four boards that are going to form the perimeter of the drawer. We'll attach the boards at each corner using wood glue and a couple one and a quarter inch long 18 gauge finish nails. Now I will say that this is about the most basic way to build a drawer and it works well for smaller projects like this, but if you're going to be doing some bigger drawers or want to use some fancier techniques like dowels, rabbit joints, or dovetails, by all means, go for it. I had some quarter inch thick plywood sitting around that will be the bottom of the drawer. Cut the plywood down to size on a table saw and then run a bead of wood glue around the bottom of the drawer sides, then attach the plywood using 18 gauge finish nails. The half inch thick pine used for the drawer sides was ripped to one and a quarter inches in width, so it's going to have the clearance to fit into the hardware. The first slides I used were inexpensive and super easy to install. They're labeled left and right to make things easy, and the hardware that attaches to the drawer needs to be flush up to the front side of the drawer, and then the wheel should be toward the back. Then attach it with the included screws using either the underside holes or the side holes. I started using the side holes but then realized the underside holes were better to use for the way I built this particular drawer. The other hardware should be mounted with the wheel toward the front and in 1 16th of an inch from the front face board. I rested the hardware flush with the bottom of the board that will extend into the room and then attached it with the short screws included with the hardware. Do this on both sides and then try out your new drawer. As long as the drawer is one inch less in width than the opening, you'll have a drawer that should fit well. Less than the 16 inch width that I had to work with. This way it will slide in and out without ever rubbing. Then attach the drawer front um, from the back side by pre-drilling and then inserting one inch long screws. The top for the desk is made out of an edge glued solid pine board that I purchased from the store and then cut down to 40 inches by 18 inches. I grabbed dinner and then came back outside to do a quick sanding over all the surfaces. I used 220 grit sandpaper and an orbital sander for this process. Before staining or sealing, you'll want to wipe down the wood to remove any sawdust or other particles. For this project, I wanted a real light finish to match the rest of the house, and so I decided to brush on an oil-based polyurethane. I brushed the urethane on all the surfaces to give everything a finished look, and then once the first coat was fairly dry, I test installed it in the garage to see how it was going to look. Once in place, I let it sit overnight, and then came back the next day and lightly sanded the top and sides with 400 grit sandpaper and then did a thin second coat and called it good. Standard height for a desk is typically around 29 inches and so I measured up from the ground and then drew a level line. A laser level will also work for this if you have one. You'll want to mark the studs so you'll have a solid place to attach the desk and then next put the frame in place and attach it to the wall at each stud location. I used 4 inch long 3 16 inch leg bolts to make a real secure connection. I'd recommend using a washer on the inside of the frame if possible to prevent the bolt from countersinking into the wood. Have a level handy throughout the process to double check that the desk is installed level. If your desk is going to be installed in a corner, you'll want to secure it to the other wall for some additional support. Once the frame was installed to the wall, I slid the top of the desk in place and attached it using wood glue and a few 18 gauge finish nails. This secured the top and then I threw a level on the desk again to make sure it was level from side to side and front to back. If you're building a larger desk and feel it needs more support, I wanted to show you a couple bracket options I found at the local hardware store. These vary in length and style and they'd add a lot of support to any desk. This smaller desk can go without, but I figured I'd show you a couple options just in case you'd like to use metal brackets. Here's the prototype I made of the desk that is basically identical to the desk made in this video. It holds this 80 pound bag of concrete well with minimal sagging, which is far more weight than I'll ever use the computer desk for. And that's all there was to it. Here are a couple shots of the finished desk. 
All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I hope it inspires you to get out there and to build something in your garage. If you did find the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and comment below and let me know what you thought of the project and if you have ideas for other upcoming projects that you'd like to see built on the channel. Thanks again for watching and cheers from Montana.